Welcome back. How we doing? Happy Tuesday, everybody. Welcome back to the Funker News Network. Again, I don't. I still don't know why we call ourselves the Funker News Network. We are not a news source. We're a bunch of veterans that care very much about documenting and tracking combat footage from across the globe. So, I don't know why we call it the Funker News Network, uh, but that's what it's called. So please, if you wouldn't mind, slap on the like button for me. We're here a little bit early again today. We're going to hang out, chat. There's a lot for us to talk about today, though. Uh, I'm going to already start to spin this down. I've had a busy day. I almost got banned on TikTok. That was fun. I figured I'd give that a shot. It went real well. Uploaded four things. One of them got a community guidelines violation. And it was the least impactful or violent of the four. But it did show some uh, border guards, which we're going to watch here in a few minutes, tackling a human trafficker. So that's fun. Maybe they like having that up there. We'll, we'll just we'll leave that there. How we doing? Mailed it with the audio. I did. I did. The audio is live. We started the stream. No technical issues so far. It's going to be a good one. We actually have a lot of stuff to talk about today. Um... You know, we'll get to that when we get to it. If you wouldn't mind, just like always, let me know in the chat where you guys are chiming in from. Uh, if you're brand new to the stream, you know, that's something that I just love to see, right? Uh, we are we are a community of, uh, of people from across the globe, uh, hoping very much so to peer straight down the middle rather than through any mainstream media. We host combat footage on Funker530.com. TikTok is a predator. <laughs> it said something, something. I don't know. I don't know what the thing said. Something, something violence, something, something protect our community. Listen, you're being protected, okay? They're protecting you. It's good for you. Try it out. People's Republic of Washington State in the house. How are you? <laughs> Music's still playing in my ear. I know you guys can't hear it at this point. Virginia, the Commonwealth. What's up? Sweden. Uh, tomato country? I thought they said Tomato County. I, I thought that I, I, I thought you were in Tomato County. There's a county in Virginia called Fauquier County. First time somebody said that to me, and I say, "Excuse me, <laughs> Ronnie." The Antonovsky, the Antonovsky Bridge is now in the river. The whole thing, because I was just looking at the Antonovsky Bridge, and it looks like it's still, you know, somewhat intact. Sup from Saskatchewan. Oh, that seems like a foreign country. What's up, Funker? How you feeling, buddy? He's a little under the weather. He's he's got the sniffles today. Uh, behind enemy lines in California. Yikes! Yikes! Welcome in, welcome in. If you wouldn't mind slapping the like button, uh, either with a quick backhand slap or a good strong, you know, uppercut right. Either one works just fine for me. Just don't break it. All right? Don't break the like button. We need that. We're going to talk about a lot today. Like I mentioned, though, we're going to talk about... Um, <laughs> we're going to talk about strikes behind uh, Russian lines in Ukraine and Crimea. We're going to talk about uh, the daughter of Alexander Dugan. Um, we're going to take a look at, you know, I I've restructured the, the normal footage sections to be uh, we'll take a look at Ukraine perspective footage, and then we'll take a look at Russian perspective footage. We're not memeing it all. Some, some all. We're not going to meme it all. Some of it, though. Uh, and then we're going to take a look at quite a bit of law enforcement footage today. Uh, some of that is is a meme, and it's really impossible to 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 not laugh at some of that, you know. Um, but before we get there, I got a couple of uh, admin announcements. First and foremost, I want to chat real quick about the sponsor of this episode, us. Please download the app, right? The more we try to put content out on all of these platforms, the more we are running into challenges keeping that content uh, in a place where we're able to reach people, right? There might come a time and a day that even this show uh, could get shut down. It's not, it's not foreign uh, for YouTube or for these you know, larger social media sites to decide to do that. So please download the app. We're asking you for that simply because there's a reason we put it in place. A lot of the content that we have really cuts straight down the middle of the narrative. I, myself, as a human being, I have my own personal biases. But from a content perspective, we, we host this footage raw. You can draw conclusions from it that, that are your own, right? 
And that, for some reason, doesn't really align with the way social media likes to work nowadays. Whether it be YouTube, uh, Facebook, we are at, still at risk of being shut down on Facebook. Even though all of our Facebook community strikes were supposed to go away a month ago, they, the, the community strikes now say visible until a month ago. How does that work? If it was supposed to go away a month ago, why is it still there and telling me that it was going to go away a month ago? Anyway, download the app, exclamation point app. It's free. Uh, for those of you that don't like ads, there is an ad-free version of that coming where we have built that from the ground up, right? What Here's what that means. We spent the time and the energy building that from the ground up so that we are not reliant on third parties to bring this content to bear. All right. That's our sponsor. If you have an OnlyFans page, Ronnie, I moved all my OnlyFans content to my Instagram. Here's a hot tip. I did have an OnlyFans page, but uh, it was just, it was nothing but pictures of me with various fans, like oscillating fans, um, you know, ceiling fans, the, the microwave fan. Uh, surprisingly, I didn't get any subscribers to that. Mm, lasagna plus Funker 530 equals the perfect night. I love lasagna. I love lasagna. What's that one food that everybody has that you just can't get enough of? Mine is, you know, cylindrical shaped meats. Like I'm being serious, hot dogs, bratwurst, kielbasas, you know, stuff of stuff of that nature. But everybody's got that one food that they can't get enough of. Thanks for the two dollars there. We also had twenty dollars come in from Dave before we were live. Dave, thanks for the twenty bucks, man. That's awesome. Appreciate that very much. Facebook does suck. Yes. Yes, they do. Um, we've experienced this a few times, right? And it and it's not even on content that that I would consider violent or you know controversial. Do you guys want to see? Do you guys want to see what got us uh, our most recent guideline strike on Facebook? Do you want to see it? I'm happy to show it to you. Let's take a look at it. I'll show you. I'll show you. We got our guideline strike. I believe it's here. Where do I have that? Oh, I'm gonna log in. I don't even know what my login information is for Instagram. Is that it? No. I know what I can do. That right there. You do? You want to see it? Okay, good. Because I'm going to show it to you. Oh, God. I got to grab my phone. Multi-factor stuff. Be right back. Try not to stare at my butt. Uh, yes, I did try to log in. A sausage and <laughs> stop at you. White Castle cheeseburgers. I don't like White Castle cheeseburgers, man. You ask for no onions. I like onions, right? But I don't always want onions on my food, right? But you ask for no onions and then they still, it, it still just tastes like onions. I don't know. We might not be able to watch to watch that uh, watch that thing. I have to log into Instagram, and it's asking me for a six-digit code, but it didn't send me that code. I can understand two-factor authentication being helpful. You know, it, it it helps protect my stuff. Oh, there it is. But it's still such a pain in the ass. All right, here we go. Here we go. Now that I'm logged into Instagram. And it's funny because Instagram is like the same as Facebook, but they didn't remove it from Instagram, but it did get removed from Facebook. Where is that video? There it is right there. Excellent. How do I watch it full screen? I don't know how to watch it full screen, but here you go a badass saying something like send me i know that guy he's me this is the video that got us 
a community guidelines violation. This is the rough equivalent of that one idiot in your unit that was always taking a picture of himself in Miles gear like a badass saying something like, send me. I know that guy. He's me. Oh, this idiot with the blue check mark here. You talk all the shit you want. They are two and zero. Oh. No, they're not. This is the rough equivalent of that one idiot. No, they're not. That was always taking Stop a picture it. of himself in Miles gear like a badass, saying something like, "Send me." I know that, that video right there. Me. If anybody can help me understand why that would be a community guidelines violation, I would be a very happy person. You remember that, dragons? Yep. Yeah, but it's still going on. We thought it would be done and over with by now. Still going on. Still running into those challenges. Uh, so the best thing that we know um, is we can we control our own destiny in the app. And please, please download it. You know, we're not at we're not collecting your data. We're not asking you that for any other reason than just being able to reach you. Let's jump into what we got to talk about today. So if you're if you're living under a rock, you probably didn't know that the daughter of Alexander Dugan which is a Russian ultranationalist propagandist uh, in, what, in whom a lot of people believe is somewhat of the brain behind, um, you know, Russia's expansionist kind of ideology, was killed in a car bomb in, inside of Russia. Now, Russia, obviously uh, and predictably, has blamed that on Ukraine. There's a whole litany of weird stuff that has uh, about the, this investigation that Russia has conducted. We're going to watch some of the video of uh, the aftermath of that, including one that's, regardless of who it is, still a little difficult to watch because what you're seeing is a father, um, you know, reportedly seeing his daughter explode in front of him. Uh, we aren't going to watch any of the nastier stuff that I've seen on Telegram that's that's reported to show aftermath. But here's this video for you guys. So this is reportedly just following that explosion. This is uh, Alexander uh, Dugan himself. And presumably this back here is that vehicle that just caught fire. They were in the same convoy uh, with Alexander, a few cars behind, if I'm not mistaken. His daughter, daughter being uh, either Doria, Doria, Daria, many different ways you could potentially pronounce that. And I'm not even going to try anymore. Now, the Russian FSB has apparently already solved this, uh, and they, they solved it within 24 hours. We're going to get to that here in just a second, but we're going to watch a couple videos of the ensuing investigation, um, or at least what what is reported to be the investigation, or purportedly the investigation, I should say. That's a better, that's a better word for it. The big question on everybody's mind, and this is, you know, goes back to the title of the video, is... Uh, was this was this a strike that was planned uh, and conducted by Ukraine? I'm going to give you my short my short non-expert opinion on that, which is no. But I'll I'll kind of exp expound upon that here in just a second. Here's some more video of the aftermath. <laughs> Now, a couple pertinent things to know about uh, Daria Dur Dugina. I'm, I'm only assuming you would pronounce it that way. We all know how good I am at pronouncing things. A couple pertinent things to know is she herself, in, uh, when the initial reports came out, there were a couple that were, um, you know, kind of, kind of played along the innocent bystander um, narrative. And while she wasn't a, a while she wasn't a combatant, right? I would consider her to be a non-combatant. She was herself a propagandist, ultranationalist, uh, consistently and publicly supporting Russia's invasion of Ukraine, calling in some instances for for some pretty heavy escalations. That yet doesn't probably justify 
uh, a strike of uh, of this type of nature. You know, we're starting to get down these like moral gray areas relative to combatants versus non-combatants, this side versus that side kind of stuff. You know, effectively, it, it still a human being. So what we really need to, the way that I've kind of forced myself to really look at this is what was what was the impact of what she was saying on Ukraine and what would the impact be of her removal from kind of the global picture? And this is why I believe that it probably wasn't conducted by Ukraine. A, yes, she was a vocal, um, she was vocally in support of Russia's invasion. But the media is, is painting her to be this national, you know, somewhat pro-Russian celebrity, when in fact, my understanding of her impact was very, very, uh, was, was kind of relegated to the far right in Russia, in even Russia itself. So removing her while you potentially removed a mouthpiece, was it really something of the gravity that w would change the landscape, especially one when you take on the risk of conducting this type of a sabotage attack inside Ukraine or inside Russia, so this is kind of considered cloak and dagger type stuff. Um, while Ukraine does would theoretically have that capability, if it were to come to light that it was Ukraine, which we'll talk about in just a second, that has a reputation damning aspect to it uh, because it is, like I mentioned, a little bit cloak and dagger, a little bit uh, you know under the table, if you will. Uh, the last video I wanted to look at here is just another aftermath video. This is uh, the cleanup or or the, the forensics that are being conducted on the scene. I'm going to give you guys full screen quickly on this one. This is from TASS. So like I mentioned, this is part of that FSB quote-unquote investigation that took place right after it. Uh, and for those that might be new to the channel, we're only live twice a week. So, you know, there's been a lot of discussion and a lot of discourse on uh, social media about this, uh, but we haven't had, yet had a chance to cover it. Here's the problem with the FSB's investigation. First and foremost, it was completed inside of 24 hours. And the level of complexity and specificity that they had for it, which includes Estonia, a cat, and Russian special forces. And I wish I was kidding about the cat. Um, the level of complexity and specificity that they had inside of that 24 hours, when in fact the FSB wasn't competent enough to identify the threat in the first place, itself is a question mark. That's where we circle this back to whether or not Ukraine did it. Here is a shot. Dart, meet dartboard. There's a higher likelihood, in my opinion here. Uh, this is an opinion. It is not supported by analysis. It's not supported by fact. It is not supported by um, any, any intelligence whatsoever. We are more than likely looking at something in the realm of a false flag. Uh, it is somebody that they could remove that would be nationally uh, or internationally recognized, uh, yet still not overly damaging to uh, Russia and its capabilities. If they were to remove Dugan, reportedly you'd be removing one of Putin's biggest allies. So you're either looking at a false flag attack or you're looking at internal strife, i.e. Um, you know, Putin reminding his circle who's boss. Difficult to know at this point, but I do know this. Let's talk about this investigation. So the FSB within 24 hours was able to identify that this woman, Natalia Vovk, I don't know how to pronounce that. Natalia Vovk, pulling up her imagery for you or her picture for you right now. Right here. Reportedly made her way into Russia sometime around July, if I recall correctly. She stayed in an apartment building that was right. She stayed in an apartment building that um, Daria's, Daria also stayed in, followed her to this event that they were at, um, you know, not only employed, but then executed this plan uh, and, and made her way both in and out of the country with a cat. I don't know why they included the fact that she had a cat, 
but that level of specificity was provided. Here's the problem, is the internet is full of very, very smart people. Not unlike most of you all. The internet has already kind of shut this down, and I'm going to point you guys to a really, really great Twitter thread. Now, a, a user out there on Twitter, and I'm going to give you guys this link before we pull it up here, basically took the official documents that the FSB supposedly uncovered of Natalia's connection to Azov, took those official documents and tore them apart from a Photoshop perspective. Let's pull that up. So first and foremost, this individual, and, and I can't validate this, but I thought it was some, I thought it was some great work. So this individual just essentially broke down the entirety of this image with um, forensic tools to essentially come to the conclusion that this work is absolutely Photoshopped. So I couldn't go the I couldn't go this stream without talking about this incident without without talking about this attack or you know uh, you know the uh, this event if you will because of the gravity of who it impacts not necessarily the gravity that it'll have on the war however Russia has started to essentially use this as a catalyst to at least speak about escalation of the war in some way. They have also used it to talk about escalation relative to Estonia, because supposedly if Natalia, when Natalia conducted this, she fled to Estonia with her cat. I don't understand why the cat, leave the cat out of it. Leave the cat alone. Anyway, fled to Estonia with her cat. Estonia is, is a NATO member, right? That's not a good idea. You know, for... And it's really just rhetoric from Putin. But if you begin to look at this from Russia's perspective and the value that they would gain were this to have happened and the justification inside of Russia for escalating things further, this is the type of catalyst that that could lead to, right? So it was in Russia's almost benefit for this to happen. That's where I start drawing questions about whether or not Ukraine did this. Because if Ukraine had done this, Ukraine benefits much less than Russia does. Looking at this from a Russia's invasion of Ukraine perspective, I'm being a little callous and cold speaking about somebody being killed like this. But I'm trying to look at it as objectively as possible. in the cat. <laughs> FSB and Putin did it 100%. There's nothing that because this happened inside Russia, really the only people that are going to that are going to know exactly how this happened, you know, are are either within the highest levels of our federal government with sources and placement and access or Russia themselves, right? It just, it doesn't appear to me as though Ukraine would benefit from doing this to the same extent. Now they would, because again, you're, remo you're removing a propagandist mouthpiece that is, you know, uh, essentially working to further the narrative of justifying Russia's invasion of Ukraine. But Russia stands to benefit, again, from an invasion perspective, much more by being able to use this as a catalyst to drive popular support for Russia's invasion. It would lead me, it would lead me to believe that this occurred internally. All right, let's go ahead and close out that discussion. Hey, thanks for the follows, guys. Appreciate it. Uh, I also wanted to talk about Crimea. Now, this is more from a... This this is kind of meme -y, right? 
If you're not familiar, Ukraine struck the Black Sea Fleet headquarters inside of um, Crimea, specifically Sevastopol. And we're going to show you the video of that, but the video is not really what I want to focus on here. The video is actually a compilation of all the different angles that we could find at the time of the strike, which took place on the 20th. We're going to talk about the Russia's, Russians' response here. Anyone else see your picture in the coffin? Oh, that's something I didn't even I didn't even speak to. So there was a there was a photo released of um, you know Alexander Dugan's daughter in the in the coffin, and based on the the video that you saw, the the car was engulfed in flames. The individual in that coffin did not look like they were burnt, or th those two things just didn't really meet up match up to me again. I've had relatively little time over the last couple of days to really dive into all the all the all of the different nuance with this. I'm really only brushing across the top of it, but there are a lot of things that aren't that aren't really lining up with her death and with the way Russia is kind of you know telling that story. Ukraine vehemently denies they had anything to do with it, and I'm inclined to believe them. Let's take a look at this this video here. If that doesn't stop blinking. shouldn't dive into such talks. Isn't that, what, isn't that what this show is for, though? You're hearing a lot of small arms fire right now. So let's chat about this for a second. And at this point, most of you are probably already familiar with this strike, right? What's what's at, at this point? It's not it's not foreign for Ukraine to be able to strike into Russia anymore or excuse me into russian held territory this is ukraine we're looking at you know ukrainian crimea here uh what what is interesting is russia's russia's response to this and i'm gonna i'm gonna i got a couple quotes for you here and this is from the russian installed governor um his name's mikhail he had a really long last name and because i'm so good at pronouncing things i don't want to actually try to pronounce that because i feel like i would i would you know just do it too well his name's Mikhail. Mikhail said that the fleet's air defenses were activated, and I quote, it fell on the roof of the headquarters. The drone did. No significant damage and nobody got hurt. It fell on the roof of... It was a loitering munition. That's what it does. It flies into its target and fell on the roof. But once again, we've got Ukraine reaching into the back pockets of Russia, the front pockets. I keep using the pockets reference, but uh, and technically it's not Russia. It is Russian-held territory. So when I say uh, into the pockets of Russia, I, I, I more mean, you know, into areas where Russia previously felt more safe. Now, where this really starts to get interesting is uh, I'm sure all of you guys are familiar with uh, Rob Lee. He's uh, an excellent source of information on Twitter. He got into a nice long Twitter thread not too long ago that really starts to support um, these loitering munitions, you know, supported by partisan type activity, Wolverines, Patrick Swayze type folks, as the res as the catalyst or the driving munition behind a lot of these question mark attacks that we've had. You know, for we'll use the Saki Air Base, for example. When that happened, 
a lot of people pointed to Atacams, and even even I did, because that's the first thing that comes to mind. I'm a fan of the HIMARS system, and I think Atacams provides a lot of capabilities back. But a lot of people point to the Atacams for that strike because of the the presence and existence of craters. Well, Russia is kind of notorious for leaving unattended munitions next to their aircraft. Uh, these loitering munitions could very, very easily have impacted those munition sites, um, you know, with, with extreme accuracy, resulting in craters. So we're starting to look at a potential here that these loitering munitions, these drones, are what might actually be what has been causing a lot of these ammunition dumps, these air bases to go up in flames, because a lot of the footage that we're seeing isn't the actual strike themselves, right? Whether it be Saki Air Base, uh, whether it be the um, ammunition ammunition dump just to the northeast of there, we're, we're typically always watching like a sympathetic explosion, something after the fact. So we still don't fully know what it was uh, and it, especially given range challenges and problems to understand that. We still don't fully know what it was, but this attack we know is a loitering munition and it starts to lend a little bit of credence to those other attacks potentially being uh, loitering munitions, which also supports the you know special forces sabotage type narrative that Ukraine did hint and acknowledge. What we weren't sure of is at what level, even if it was a TACMS or a missile strike, you can have soften some form of some form of a forward observer role one way or another ukraine continuing to reach into areas where russia previously felt as though they were safe viking thank you for the 20 man i just want to check back in and say thank you again to those sending in a little bit of support to us we're we're a small team every little bit helps and we appreciate it very much especially with all the with the challenges that we've been having with social media lately i, I appreciate it very much viking um 1891, thanks very much for the $2 again. Dave, thanks for the 20 before that. Just checking in on the chat here. Ukraine's not involved because she and her father were just two trivial small timers. That's a point that I made a little bit earlier going back to Alexander Dugan and his daughter is... The media is kind of painting them it, to an extent to be some some kind of, you know, national level celebrity superstar. That's that's absolutely not not the case. Um, you know, Alexander Dugan himself is, is definitely the more uh, recognizable of the two, but she was really kind of riding a lot of his coattails relative to a following. Uh, she was building that. She, I want to say she was 29, 30 years old, somewhere somewhere around there. Uh, but she was really only best known in, in far right-wing circles. At least that's my understanding. I saw a video with the confession. I saw that video too. Uh, so there is, there's a video that's floating around of an internal group inside of Russia that is, that is quote, taking credit for it, but I, w I wasn't able to find any kind of secondary source or anything along those lines. I know I kind of, I pull up, you know, multiple single source type uh, pieces of information, but um, that one, I, I kind of just, I'm going to keep in my back pocket for now. Fuse tied. Oh, we're still going about the cat. Look, I just don't understand what the cat, what's the pertinence of saying that? The, the, the report said, we know that she came into Russia and left Russia with a cat. Like, are you afraid of the cat? What's the pertinence of that? Leave the cat alone, man. Russian partisans, there's a precedent for that, right? We know the, the uh, Russian legion that's fighting on behalf of Ukraine in Ukraine. Uh, there are absolutely Ukrainian... Uh, sympathizers inside of Russia, probably more than uh, we could understand, especially given that if you speak outwardly against Ukraine inside of, excuse me, if you speak outwardly against Ukraine inside of Russia, it's bad things are going to happen.
Because the cat did it. <laughs> we just solved it, guys. That's the value that we bring to the table. We just solved it for everybody. Let's dive in. Let's dive into our first, um, you know, footage section of the night. We're going to be looking at uh, uh, Ukraine perspective footage first, and first we're diving into helmet cam type footage. Uh, this very first one, what I want to do is I want to give you guys the link to this. I want to give you leave to go and check out Josh's analysis on this because because it is an excellent write up. You know, Josh never disappoints in his write ups. The point that he ends up making here is much is a very centrist type of point, uh, and what he is saying is effectively, it's easy to 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 flip a coin and pick a side. But when you're on the ground in a situation in a firefight like this, you're not fighting for some, you know, political alignment. You're fighting for the individual that's standing next to you in the hopes that they'll still be standing next to you at the end of it. Let's take a look at this uh, video. Great write-up it was. It was. Josh himself is a, publi is a published author. We can talk more about Josh's book right after the footage. Отход, 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 отход. Оп! Отход! All right. So again, you know, I want to give you guys let me let me get this next video keyed up here, and I want to give you guys the link to that one. And I I, I would really love for you for you to head over there and read Josh's analysis that he put together, uh, or the context that he's providing there, because that's what that's that's what differentiates us from, you know, like a live leak. You know, live leak isn't even a thing anymore. What is it called? Item fix or something? Now, what even is that? Like I'm not throwing any shade at it, it's, but but what did what what is that what is that name? Right. Anyway, we're not a gore site. It's, it's not our sole purpose and opinion, or excuse me, I didn't mean to say opinion. It's not our sole purpose to just show you dead people. There are dead people that end up on our website, right? But that is based on the context of the footage that we that we you know think is relevant. You know, a lot of people ask, why didn't, why didn't you show this, this footage, right? There's plenty of footage of dead Ukrainians. Yeah, but it, where's, the, where's the combat footage relevance, right? What is the relevance to that footage? Josh talks about the relevance to this footage in that write-up, and I think you should go and check it out. Uh, let's take a look at this next one. This is Azov. This is an Azov soft team. Uh, third platoon. Uh, it starts with a G. Third platoon of Azov, uh, third of the first, I think. Uh, this is one of their assaults on a Russian defensive line. There is audio in the background. I'm going to let it ride. Uh, I'll have to deal with the, the copyright strike, or excuse me, copyright claim later, if it is copywritten music. So if you guys are watching this on the VOD, uh, you might end up with muted audio. Just a heads up on that. Kevin, thank you for the 20, sir. Thank you very much for that. Josh, thank you for the 20. This war is turning into an ace combat pilot plot without the wild super one. I've got a, I've got a video coming out um, on the edited uh, FNN side of the house that actually kind of talks about that. 
Um, anyway, here's here's this footage here. So I've seen this comment a couple times, something about, you know, waste of ammo. I would attribute this to attempting to achieve some level of fire superiority. Right? I think there's a balance there. Bringing it up. Uh, Psyops, thanks for the 20. I don't know when. I don't know how. But one day, I will stroke that mustache. Be prepared. Thanks for the 20. Appreciate it, man. Thanks very much. Hmm. Got to shoot ammo to make ammo. Call it suppression. Yeah. All right, let's jump into the next one here. This one's actually a really interesting one. Um, and I would love to get your take on it. So what we're going to watch is we're going to watch some Luhansk People's Republic forces surrender to Ukrainian forces. What I'd, what I'd love for, for your take on is, to me, when I first watched this, it looked very much so like... Uh, Ukraine. The Ukrainians knew they were coming, um, rather than some kind of a happenstance windfall of you know LPR forces showing up and they just happen to take them prisoner. Let me know what you guys think here in just a second. Russia destroyed the Azovs. Apparently not. We just watched Azov assaulting a Russian position. So here you go. Note, note, there are no rifles. Oh, there's a rifle. I lied to you. Negotiated surrender. Now, there was a comment. We do read the comments. I want to show you guys the comment here. I wonder if you'll be able to see that. Nope. We're going to put me in the low right. There was a comment here that I haven't had the chance to go and validate yet uh, by Kenton Ryan. On Telegram, the Ukrainians are saying they have a hotline to call and set up a surrender and showed the same video saying that this was the case here. I haven't validated that, but that would make sense, right? There's a precedent for stuff like that. We drop leaflets. Uh, I personally have dropped leaflets uh, out of a, a Chinook that said, you know, similar stuff. If you surrender to us, then you'll be safe. Uh, so it would make sense that they would use uh, digital means to do that. 
It was an operation where guys surrender because they were forcibly modal mobilized. That's really small text. Can't read that. Uh, so there is other video that's out there of LPR, even Russian forces, uh, Donetsk People's Republic forces refusing to fight. Right. So I think I think tugging on that inherent bias uh, is something that Ukraine has done probably pretty well. Um, this is evidence of at least some LPR forces refusing to fight uh, in surrendering to Ukrainian forces. What I would say, though, is that conscripts are not regular soldiers, right? So if had had this been a happenstance type situation, and Josh speaks a little bit to this in his analysis, had this been a windfall type situation where regular Russian army just happens to bump into Ukrainian regular army, I think that ends up being a shootout. So either they were waiting for them to come there or, you know, it's just conscripts being conscripts, right? They were forced into their service. You know, they're not really there for any other reason than they were forced, than they were told to be. Amid, uh, amidst the various war crimes, do you think giving no quarter would receive a lot of international backlash? Absolutely. Absolutely. Regardless, regardless, uh, two wrongs don't make a right. Right. That's like uh, that's that's like grandma 101 stuff. Two wrongs aren't going to make a right there. So Ukraine, Ukraine is working to to develop and foster the reputation that they that they are better than that. See what I mean? So if if they were to stoop to that level, that is going to really damage that It's going to damage support from the West uh, and it's going to damage international opinion which is important. Perception is reality. Do you think instead of dropping grenades on the Russians, uh, they should drop surrender leaflets instead? Might work. No, not necessarily. I, I think... Um, you know, there's, there's probably more that they could do to demoralize tactically on the ground. You know, it's the type of stuff that, that, you know, I got, a, I was applied to leaflet drops, um, some other technical means of getting messages out, you know, at a tactical level, but you know, if nothing, nothing beats a kinetic effect from a propaganda perspective, when we had the opportunity to, we would drop bombs to have a desired effect uh, on morale, Right explosions impact morale more than anything else. All right, let's jump into the next one here. So uh, we oftentimes hear and talk a lot about HIMARS. Uh, what we don't typically get to see is aftermath type footage of the HIMARS. We've got a relatively massive HIMARS strike on a um, Russian forward operating base in uh, the Donetsk region. Specific location details I don't have for this one. Coming up for you guys now. Copyright and music on the back end there. Let's run that one more time. All right. Again, we get to see, we, we typically see a lot of, um, you know, HIMARS launch footage, but not a whole lot of what happens to its destination. We've seen, you know, the the after the aftermath effects of that. We saw that on Anna Tanovsky. Uh, but to be honest with you, GMLRS isn't really designed to target bridges. So the damage in the way that it looked on Anna Tanovsky bridge uh, really wasn't representative of the capabilities of the system. It was representative of the accuracy. Come here. Come here. You stop whining. I'm sorry, guys. Hi, baby.
She's sad because mom's away. So she's got to come and bother me. You can stay here with me. All right, let's jump into the next one we've got here. We've got uh, another Western weapon system, the Excalibur. Some more footage of the Excalibur being used. That's right. They left me home alone for the day. I've got to use the search bar. Because for some reason, the link that I have didn't want to work. There we go. Quick and easy. Doggo. Yeah, that's Luna. She's a Bernese mountain dog with 25% Pyrenees. Supposedly, the 25% Pyrenees, um, she was a... She was a present for the for the wife back in the day. We we got ourselves a runt um golden retriever too. He's around here somewhere. He's af afraid of steps. Big sissy. Here you go. So what we're going to see here is Excalibur strikes on a 1L261 radar vehicle. We'll see how accurate. Now, the interesting thing about these is they are in uh proximity mode or airburst mode, so you'll see them exploding over top of the vehicle, uh, which sends that primary fragmentation down from there. And it's pretty nasty to watch. Okay, Luna. Hi. Come here. Hi, baby. You're watching video. Now, what you'll what you what you will have seen is that initial that initial hit on the vehicle, and then you know fires around it for any remaining dismounts or infantry, especially in the tree line. There, we'll see one get close to the tree line. All right, let's bring it back up. Yeah. Got a dog problem again. It's the it's the best kind of dog problem though. Hey baby. Where you going? Go lay down. You go lay down. <laughs> go lay down. Go on, thank you. TikTok Battalion still active? Yep. Yep. Still still doing the nasheed over the shoulder shots. Love it. Uh, we're going to be jumping into our Russian perspective footage that we've got. So the very first thing uh, was actually a really interesting one. And I've read stories about stuff like this, but th this is going to be Russian soldiers uh, walking up on and discovering a remote-controlled BTR turret that was defending a trench. It's really hard to say how effective it was, uh, but based on the amount of rounds fired, it, it probably at least slowed the Russian advance to some extent. Управление, да, дистанционно. Да, Захар. Хорошо. Да. Я не могу, по нам жизни не давал вообще. То есть, оператор сидел там, да, где? Да, он сидел там и фигарил, блин. Он нам жизни не давал, мы сюда минометом вот прям вот так вот рядом падает. Пофиг. А он все равно работает, блин. Мы думаем, да что там такой за пулеметчик, блин. Думали, может, буцефал. Работали, работали, а потом, когда уже зашли, увидели, что там уже ночник был. А что за пулемет? А это башня с под БТР. Everyone's growing a mustache in honor of you. I heard even Putin's looking at you growing a mustache. I wonder what his mustache smells like. Mine smells like hot dogs and X body spray. So I wonder what his smells like. Дистанционно он на каком расстоянии мог управлять? Да, он мог даже в блиндаже просто сидеть, видишь, там провода идут, вот, вот они, провода все идут. Он просто в блиндаже сидел, видать, там мониторчик, экранчик, и просто тут ту 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 и все. И не давал жизни, блин, вообще. I spent some time... All right, there's my stupid face coming up. So, again, that was a uh, remote-controlled BTR turret that was being used to defend that trench line. 
Uh, the next we're going to watch is Wagner Mercenaries. Uh, they're primarily using the SPG-9 recoilless system as well as the TOS 1A, and we're going to see some TOS 1A footage right after that. Uh, but help me out with this. It's spelled Wagner for my, you know, dumb American uh, brain and mouth, but my understanding is, is it's pronounced Wagner. Would that be accurate? I'm going to check in on the chat while we watch this. I'm going to kill their, their music. I bet Putin's stash would smell like Sex Panther. It's made with bits of real panther, so you know it's good. Accurate, Ronnie. Nailed it. I hit it. I killed it. Or, wait a second. Are you telling me that I pronounced something correctly? That's awesome. Yeah, they've still got crap on the back end there. I'm just watching the chat right now. 60% of the time, BTR works every time. <laughs> What's this guy doing? When I when I when I pre previewed this footage, I didn't get this far. I didn't. I just was like, oh okay, yeah, I'll put that one in the list. But I, I didn't get I didn't get this far. There's the SPG there. Uh, Psyops, thanks for the four ninety nine. All hail Saint Javelin or sisters, as they do the Lord's work. Thanks very much for the four ninety nine. Who's this Chad? I think his name's Carl, actually. Not sure. Now, so, Mr. Mr. Dover, first name Ben. Don't tell me things are pronounced a certain way because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take you for face value. If that's true, that's great. But you could tell me something is pronounced a certain way and I'm just going to take it for what you say. So speaking of the TOS 1A, if you're not familiar with the TOS 1A, they, they, they call it the heavy flamethrower. Um, it is a thermobaric system. And we've got two perspectives of a TOS 1A salvo near Pisky. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that one correctly. But we'll take a look at that here in just a second. Is that a recoil? It is. Yep. Uh, full screen. I remember it used to trigger somebody when I said, uh, I'll give it to you full screen. And I keep forgetting to say that now. Ugh. Toss salad. <laughs> oh, man. You guys crack me up. Pisky. All right. Yeah. So the way these, the way the TOS One A works, you know, it's rockets at least. Is it's a specific fuel mixture that essentially uh, burns all the uh, oxygen, the air around around the explosion. It's it's 
pretty amazing to watch. And I don't think it's one of those things that you really want to imagine being underneath of. All right, coming up on the next one here. We're running out of time. Uh, I started stream late. Did anyone bring up the fact that Dugan's funeral was uh, today and it was open casket? We did almost in passing, though. But the point that I made, and, and I'll just put myself in the lower right and continue to talk about that. The point that I made, at least for my, for me personally, is there were reports that she kind of flew out of the vehicle, and it would, I, I guess, that would kind of make sense if, um, you know, whatever expl the explosive was was placed under the driver's seat you know even ex ex explosives don't really work like it's not it's not the acme corporation or wily e. coyote uh there is a concussive blast that will move you but throwing you like out a windshield and all that stuff i i, I don't know i i actually would love to talk to our bomb tech about that um Regardless of whether or not she was thrown or if she was still in that vehicle while it was burning, it didn't look to me uh, like either of those instances um, was the case. Does that make sense? Bringing it back up. Uh, Sparky, thanks for the $2. Where do you see this war going in 2023? Uh, I see us entering a similar situation that we saw in 2014 with almost a, a level of recognition that it is the new norm, unfortunately. Um, now, to red team that, so to counter that, the West has a lot of money and time invested in Ukraine's defense right now. There, there will have to be a breaking point for Russia. There will have to be wherein they can no longer call it a special military operation and will have to designate some form of a full mobilization. Not an expert on Russia. I am not an expert on Russia, guys. I don't pretend to be. I don't want to be. That's not, that's not, that's not what I want to do. I, if I spent the time and energy to focus specifically and only on Russia, you know, I'm, I'm sure I'd be able to answer this question better. So I'm, you know, dart, meet dartboard. In my mind, though, after having eyes on this, com this invasion, since February 24th, from a world perspective, we are moving further and further towards, oh yeah, the invasion in Ukraine. Yep, that's still that's still going on. A lot like we saw in 2014. There was an there everybody was up in arms in 2014 with Russia's initial invasion. Um, there was a lot less support that was provided. There was still support provided, but it wasn't at the scale and the magnitude that we see now. So there will be there will probably come a point where one of these two sides decides that it needs to essentially break what is is presently becoming a stalemate or a, a, a or developing into a war of attrition something more decisive whether whether that is a strike on um at the government level whether it's a you know mun from a munition perspective some form of a divisive action will be chosen by one of these two sides in the next 12, 6 to 12 months. What exactly that is, is really going to shape the landscape beyond that. Because there's a lot of different options from a divisive or decisive action perspective. You can, you know, uh, the U.S.'s typical methodology is cut the head off the snake, right? You, you, you go that route. You could go... Uh, down the route of really extreme capabilities from a munition perspective. I'm not even going to say them out loud because it's it's essentially fear mongering. It's it, it's sensationalizing sensationalizing it for for really no purpose. There's nothing to indicate one way or another um, that those capabilities are going to be used. But there will have to become a, have to be a decisive action of some kind from one of the two sides. A war of attrition is not in the West's interest. A war of attrition is not in Russia's interest. Does that make sense? You need more mods? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Uh, just a point, but morticians will go to great lengths. I'd love to actually talk to a mortician about that. Right, because how far how far out are we from supposedly this woman blowing up? S sorry to be so callous about that. You know, 
uh, every time I've had a family member pass, it's, you know, from like a heart attack, it's been like, you know, a week later. Like it wasn't overnight. NATO LMAO, Russia could wipe NATO and Ukraine with one missile. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Oh, who is that? Baby Yoda. Baby Yoda, you get you get the credit of that being the most ignorant comment I've ever seen. I typically try not to feed the wildlife, but that's pretty dumb for you to believe that. With one missile? <laughs> that's that was, that was stupid. I hope you remember that. Like I hope I hope when you lay down at night, you know how your brain remembers dumb stuff you've said? I hope that's the thing. That thing right there. That sucks, man. I'm sorry that happened to you. Let's jump into the next thing that we've got here. So we're jumping into our non-Ukraine section. Uh, this very first one we talked about last Thursday. Hello? Based? Oh. Come on, he's just a baby. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sorry. That's that's somebody's sister, and I shouldn't do that. We talked about this one last Thursday. There, you know, while uh, conducting on August 12th a um, disturbance call, police detained a woman that was reportedly high on meth. As she slipped her cuffs, uh, <laughs> got control of the officer's quote. I'm quoting this on purpose because it's inaccurate. Rifle. And ended up sh using that rifle to shoot a bystander. We have the inside the vehicle view of that. And a little bit more specifically, this suspect was Rachel Clay. Um, <laughs> I'll let you guys, I'll let you guys watch this. Coming up for you now. This is the video from inside the vehicle of her obtaining that quote unquote rifle and proceeding to fire it. And then we'll watch the footage of, you know, what she was firing at for those that weren't around for that. There is no audio to this. I'd just like to point something out here in just a second. Right there. That right there. That's a pistol. All right, let's watch the uh, other footage that we have, which is, you know, on the receiving end of this. Um. Important to note, I don't know whether whether or not this is technically not safe for work or not. I, I don't know. Uh, who knows anymore? But a dude gets shot. He does not die. Important to note. He doesn't die. But this is what it looked like on the receiving end of that volley of gunfire. And we covered this one last week. What was that? Oh, oh, man, Danny, I'm hit right here. I'm hit. Yeah. I'm hit. Uh, I'm hit right here too, Danny. Hit in the head. So here's it, this is important to note. The bystander was shot uh, in the upper right chest, I believe, and this officer received a grazing wound to the head. Both did survive. 2615 County, we got shots fired up here. We need backup immediately. Start EMS. Start EMS. We got a civilian. We got a civilian hit. What the heck? Did she get out of her cups? No. Yes, she did. Did he go in? Stay in. You see her, Danny? You got eyes on? 
Shots fired. Get over here. Get over here. You're dead. Now, she is, uh, I'm presuming she is in this vehicle, this white uh, patrol vehicle in the back here. It's hit, man. He got hit. He got hit. Get in. Get in. All right, coming up. So, just wanted to make sure and show you guys kind of the update to that. Uh, again, reportedly, she she was um, on methamphetamines, and she was in that vehicle for somewhere around 15 minutes uh, unattended while they talked to the homeowners who had reportedly called in to the police, the police department for an erratic woman, quote-unquote. Uh, this one got me banned on TikTok, almost. Got close. Doing a uh, <laughs> a TikTok breakdown and analysis of this wild ass confrontation between Border Patrol agents and a reported human trafficker. This is happening somewhere around San Diego, uh, near the U.S. Mexico border. Coming up for you guys now. What I'd like to point out here is I'd like to point out that's a good NFL tackle right there. You're not getting a flag on that any day of the week, boss. Pads low, no helmet to helmet contact. Beautiful. Technique. It's all about technique. Right? This is the new NFL. Oh, this is the border. Never mind. Okay. Bring it back. Uh, the next one we've got here is... <laughs> For those of you that caught our new uh, content style on YouTube earlier today, we're going to be taking a look at uh, the long-form version of this video. A big boy tackle. That man's an adult, isn't he? Oh, I bet that hurt. But it was a good tackle. No flag, you know. Keep that hanky in. Keep that hanky in your pants, ref. That was a good one. Uh, what we're going to see here is actually cops in Ohio taking down or abduct, or, uh, abducting. Jeez, woof. Uh, apprehending teenage carjackers. There's going to be a. There's going to be a point I'd like to make on this one too. Uh, show the three cops beat the guy down. Keep real. One of the most difficult videos I've ever seen. As soon as, as soon as we put it up, we'll talk about it. You know, there's two sides to every coin, man. That was, that was f***ing ridiculous to watch. I'm not a cop. But I'm happy to say that. That was tough to watch, man. Same instance. There was a police officer... Uh, who there was a homeless veteran on the side of the road with his service dog not too long ago. We talked about that then too. 
Homeless, homeless veteran on the side of the road with his service dog. He's begging for change. Two police officers went up to him and said, you can't do that. His service dog got a little iffy, didn't get aggressive at all. They ended up tasing the service dog, arresting the veteran, and the service dog ended up dying out there on the road. There's two sides to every coin, man. I get it. Coming up full screen here. We're going to watch this all the way through, and then I'm going to come back and talk about something here. So what we're looking at is these are these are uh, teenagers inside of this vehicle. There have been a string of carjackings in the area, so police have been on the lookout for stuff like this. They were they were searching for this vehicle, this blue Hyundai, for quite a while. Uh, they ended up getting a call that it was at this gas station, so they blocked it in. You know, I had to use a little bit of force to keep it from trying to get away. As you saw, the Hyundai tried driving away. But there's one specific thing I'd like to point out here. One thing. Oh, first, first, first and, and foremost. This vehicle over here, brand new. It's got a temporary tag, uh, brand new to the owner. It's got a temporary tag right there, no license plate on the back. I'd like, to po I'd like to point something out to you. And I'd like you to divert your attention right here in the window. That's his car. He goes to come out like, wait a second. Look at his face. Oh, man. <laughs> as they as they ram here, watch him watch him turn his head. Oh man. And all the comments on uh on Instagram were you know, uh, he's going to get a new car. No he won't. No he won't. He might get a letter, you know. Um I I mean maybe I could be wrong. But my understanding of what happens in that instance is that you report it to your insurance, you let them know it, it wasn't your fault, your deductible ends up going up after that and you kind of got to just move on with your life. When I was in high school, um and it is a very different situation, but it's really the only ex personal experience that I've got with a situation like this. We the police officers would always come with the with the drug dogs, right? Uh, one of my buddies, the dog hit on his car, so I mean they tore it apart. Uh, I mean a knife to the seats, compartments ripped out, just tore it apart. There was nothing in there, right? Nothing at all. Um, he and his family had to pay out of pocket for that entirely. It's a Buick, people. It's, hey, man, you know, one man's trash is another man's treasure, right? That, it's, a, it's obvious that he just bought that, right? So, I mean, that, that could be the, the first chance he's, put yourself in his shoes. This is the first time he's, he's, had a vehicle of his own, maybe. I don't know. Regardless, it sucks. It sucks being that dude. A little late tonight? Oh, it's all good, Farley. Welcome in. Welcome in. We're about to close things down, and I'll be jumping over to the other side here in just a second. Probably buff out. To be honest with you, the Buick uh, doesn't look all that damaged. I drove a Plymouth Dynasty, a 1980-something Plymouth Dynasty for a while. And that thing just survived everything I threw at it.
Now, the Hyundai probably isn't going far after this. Well, I expect they're going to they're going to compound or, you know, impound that at this point. I don't know, maybe they'll give that back to the owner. The Hyundai itself is uh <laughs> stolen. So what's interesting now is then you also put yourself in the in the shoes of uh, you know, the blue vehicle's owner. Right? I got to ask um I got to ask our our, you know, law enforcement dude, what happens with that vehicle? Do they just give it back in the state that it is and but that also sucks. In the process of them hunting down and finding that vehicle, it's now destroyed. You know, probably not to the point of total, maybe. I don't know. Plymouth Dynasty equals tank. It was a tank, man. I remember uh, I was driving I was driving to a friend's house one night. It was like 10, 11 o'clock at night. And I absolutely obliterated a deer. I mean, you know, I, I looked down. I, I, I looked to grab something. I don't remember what it was, whether it was a drink. I don't know. I look back up and there's deer coming across and I haven't seen something do that move in a long time. Um, you know, I actually stopped the vehicle, got out, went over there. It was dead. It was very dead. That's going to be it for me. Uh, I am going to leave you guys with Bay Raktar on the way out. Uh, not the Bay Raktar that you think, but the most recent footage that we have of Bay Raktar uh, that I'm totally not showing you because it's probably considered not safe for work. Um, but people absolutely die. Thanks for being here with me. I appreciate it. You could have spent this portion of your night anywhere. You, you spent it hanging out with us, talking about the footage that we found for you. Head over to the app. Uh, if you don't have it downloaded, please download it. Uh, you can get it for free 99 on iOS and Android. Um, we appreciate it very much. We built it from the ground up so that we don't have to rely on YouTube. We don't have to rely on Facebook to bring this stuff to you. Uh, we're a very small team of people just hoping to put a, a, a little bit of knowledge back into the world for those people. Not, not like you guys, to be honest with you. A lot, of, a lot of times you guys are more up to date on some of this stuff than I am, especially specific to Ukraine, given that we're focused across the board here. But there are absolutely people out there that are not as able to stay as connected as you are. Uh, and that's what we're here to hope uh, to try and bring this content to so that they understand what the world truly looks like. Good night. Stay informed uh, and enjoy Bayraktar on the way out. We'll see you guys.